I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me a sinner condemned on how marvelous oh how wonderful and my song shall ever be how marvelous oh how wonderful is my Savior's love for me for me it was in the garden he prayed not my will but thine he had no tears for his own grief but sweat drops of blood for mine how marvelous oh how wonderful and my song shall ever be And my sorrows, he made them his very own. He bore the burden to Calvary and suffered and died alone. How marvelous, oh how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. our prayer here this morning. I come and 
one more time. Lord, I need. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Right in this place today. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my And gathered in his name to worship him. And we have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. And we have come into his house and gathered in And we have come into his house and we have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him we have come into his house and gathered in Christ the Lord, worship Him, O Christ the Lord. So forget and so forget about yourself and concentrate on Him and worship Him. So forget about yourself 
and concentrate on Him and worship Him. And so forget about yourself, concentrate on Him. Let us lift up holy hands in this place and let us lift up holy hands and magnify his name to worship him and let us lift up holy hands and magnify his name to worship him Maybe we can stand one more time as we sing that. Let us lift up holy hands and let us lift up holy hands and magnify his name to worship him. And let us lift up holy hands and magnify his name to worship him. Concentrate on Him and worship Him. And so forget about yourself and concentrate on Him and worship Him. And so forget about yourself and concentrate on Him. Lift up holy hands again and let us lift up holy hands and magnify his name to worship him. Let us lift up holy hands and magnify his name to worship. And gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. We worship you in this place, Lord. And we have come into his house and gathered in his name and worship Christ the Lord and worship him Christ the Lord.
I will be reading from the book of the Revelations, and the title of my message this morning is The Time is Near. The Time is Near. Some very interesting events that happened this week on the world scene in Afghanistan when you turn on your TV. The the Taliban has retaken that country. Our Canadian and American armed forces are scrambling to excavate or evacuate the people out of the country. The Afghan workers that work with them there trying to get them out. I read the news this morning that from the BBC that there were seven or eight people lost their lives just in the rush of getting to the airport. A week ago, the Taliban arrived at their last destination and seize the palace in Kabul. We have all of the witnesses, witnessed the uh, horrifying pictures and the news feeds that came out of that place, and we have probably witnessed something that we have never witnessed before. But I want to say here this morning that what we have experienced in the last 18 months in this world wide pandemic that we call COVID. And what's happening right now in Afghanistan will seem minimal, will seem small compared to the first 42 months or the first three and a half years of the seven years tribulation following the rapture of the church. Then the last 42 months, the last three and a half years of the rapture is called the Great Tribulation, will seem minimal compared to the first half of the four years, of the three and a half years tribulation. The last trumpets, three trumpets will be blown and the wrath will be poured out upon the earth. Horrific judgment. Over the, in this earth alone, over half the population, the Bible says, will lose their lives during the seven years tribulation period. That's why this morning this message is a very hard message to preach. You know, I usually get up here and I try and be as positive as I can, and I want to be that way this morning. But I want this message to be a message for those that are here, those that are listening on live stream as a warning, as a a flag, as as something that's happening right now currently in the world. The Bible has the, the, the good news for the Christians, the followers of Jesus Christ. We will not be here during this time, this seven years tribulation. We will be in heaven in the marriage supper of the land, and we'll be receiving our, our, our rewards from the Bema seat of Christ when the, when the rewards are given out during this seven years. So in chapter 1 of the Revelations, beginning at verse 1, for those that may have their Bibles this morning, in verse number 1 of chapter 1, this is the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servant the events that must take place soon. He sent an angel to present the revelation to his servant John, who faithfully, who faithfully reported everything he saw. And some things we don't understand in the book of the Revelations, but John reported it as to how he saw it. And this is the report of the Word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Verse number three, it says, God blesses the one who reads this word of this prophecy to the church, and he blesses all who listen to this message and obey it. What it says, for the time is near. That's the title of my message. So there's there's a double blessing here today, but there's a double blessing of me reading this message and as a blessing for you that hear this message here and are listening online today. The book of the Revelations is only 
the book in the Bible that promises this blessing upon us for listening and, and reading the Word of God. For 95 years now, in this church and behind this pulpit, well, maybe not this pulpit, back in 1926 when we started down at the Crippleback Church 95 years ago, the message has been preached on the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time is near, but the fact is, a lot of people are missing in this town, in, in Grand Falls, Windsor, in the last 95 years that are not, that were, in the last 10 years, there are people that are missing. And I know that, I'm, and I'm hoping, I pray that, that they're in heaven. But there is a heaven, and there is a hell, and they're both real. I want you to know that today. It's not a myth. The time is near. In fact, it's nearer by 95 years than it was 95 years ago. The time of his return is close. It's near. My prayer today is that you will be ready and that when that time comes or your time comes, or my time comes, that we will be ready for that day. You say, Pastor, I've heard this message over the years. They've been saying for years that the, the Lord is coming back, and there's signs, and there's signs. Yes, yes, we've been preaching that. And we believe that the coming of the Lord can happen at any time. And none of us are given tomorrow. Annette and I were saddened this week. This past week, when a friend of ours, our age, went to be with the Lord, the position that I held at the church there at Phoenix First, which is now Dream City Church, he took over the position that I had when we stepped out and planted a church in Florida. He lost his wife due to COVID. We're not guaranteed another day. Our time could come any time. It pays to be ready, amen? It pays to be ready. It was 20 years ago, in just a couple of weeks, in 2001, and I remember the very place that I was, that I was driving. How many remember the place where you were when 9-11? I can tell you exactly. I was driving down Cave Creek past Union Hills, right and I was listening to Dennis Rainey on the radio, and it was interrupted with the Twin Towers have been hit in New York. I'll never forget that day. I, I went into the church, and we were, we were in Pastor Barnett's office just listening, watching what was happening in New York. We'll never forget that day. And that was the very week that I had resigned from the church, getting ready to go to Florida, as I said, to plant a church, and Pastor Saeed was to take my position there. I remember that day, both of us walked over to the church, and we prayed at the altar there, and I kind of passed the torch to the ministry that I was in to him that day. You see, Pastor Saeed was a Muslim from Iran converted Muslim that had come here to this country, couldn't speak English, learned the language, and married a, an American lady named Cynthia. This morning she's with the Lord in his presence today. Now a similar thing will, will happen during the rapture. And those that do not know Christ as their personal Savior. You know, may know about Jesus Christ, but those that have not accepted Him as your personal Savior. When the rapture takes place, you for, for the next years, you'll remember, I know exactly where I was and who I was with. And suddenly, they vanished from my presence. Just like 9-11, you will remember and hopefully there's no one listening to my voice today that will be here 
during that time. But if you are, you will remember. We have no guarantee of tomorrow. Make your decision to today to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. I was just a young man who made a decision to follow Christ at the age of 17. And you'll have that same opportunity in our meeting today. The time is near. The rapture of the church or the taking away of the Christians could happen at any time, the Bible says. Any times. It's imminent. Some people think that uh, these two events are, are the same, the rapture of the church and the second coming of Christ. It is not. The Bible talks about two separate events. The rapture of the church, which has no warning, which is a private event, at the sound of the trumpet, this body here, this person here, those that I'm looking at, your bodies will be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, and you'll rise to meet him in the air. It's a private event. We'll meet Jesus up in the air. The coming of the Lord after the seven years is a public event. And the world will witness the event it will be reported, it'll count it down, like seven years since all of these Christians have been missing. And now seven years, we're getting ready for the, the war, the battle of Armageddon. But Jesus returns on the Mount of Olives. It's a public event. We look at the feast. We're about to, in the next few weeks, celebrate uh, feast number five. The four feasts have been, that were prophesied in the Old Testament were confirmed in the New Testament with the birth of Jesus Christ and the day of Pentecost. The last three trumpets, or the last three feasts, have not been, have not taken place yet. The trumpet, the feast of trumpets, it's Rosh Hashanah. It's a, we don't know what year, but Bible theologians believe that the trump that the Bible continued at the sound of the trumpet, at the sound of the trumpet, that Jesus will ascend from heaven and call his people home. We don't know when that day is going to be. The Bible says we don't know the day nor the hour, but it pays to be ready. And I believe the next major event of Bible prophecy is the rapture. Are you with me this morning? The next major event that we are about to witness here on earth is the rapture and the sound of the trumpet. Amen. I believe that. It pays to be ready. Some people say it. we shouldn't talk about the coming of the Lord. It makes people fearful, but for the Christian, it, it makes us excited. Yes, we are, we are fearful for those loved ones that may not be in yet, but we need to pray and believe that they're going to be in and ready before that final coming day. But in actual fact, for the follower of Christ, we are anticipating it this time. It is a very comforting teaching when you understand that the time is near the warning signs are all around us. The next major event, here it is. The Bible says, 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 16 to 18. You have your Bibles or your devices. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangels, and with the trumpet call of God. Hear that again? The trumpet call of God. Now, during the harvest time, when, when the trumpet was sound, they had to stop harvesting. They were harvesting, getting ready for the, the feast, the feast of the trumpet, Rosh Hashanah, the first day of the, of the new year. And when they heard that trumpet, they had to stop harvesting and go and prepare the feast, prepare to worship God in the temple. First, the believers who have died will, will rise from their graves. 
Verse 17, then together with them, we who are still alive and remain on earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then will we will be forever with the Lord. What a blessed hope that we have. That is the blessed hope right there. So encourage each other with those words, the Bible says. This is an instantaneous, instantaneous event. It happens just before the Antichrist is revealed. And then the seven years tribulation. Listen, COVID has been, been trying. It's been, been hard. And we've lost friends through the, COVID, through, through, through the coronavirus. And you probably have known people that have been sick with it and near death's door. And God brought them through. But COVID is bad. But as I referred to you earlier, it's minor compared to the tribulation of what's coming. Now here's the timeline. Here's the timeline. The rapture of the born-again Christians up to heaven can happen at any time. We don't know the day or the hour, but we know the times and the seasons. The Bible makes us very aware of that. Then the next seven years, the followers of Jesus will be reunited with our loved ones in heaven, and we will participate in the marriage supper of the Lamb. Aren't you looking forward to that? I'm looking forward to that day when we will be reunited with our loved ones in heaven. And to beam a seat of Christ's judgment, we will be rewarded for what we have done here on earth. You'll be rewarded for coming out to getting involved in, in discipleship and alpha at our church and all of the other ministries. All the many things that you do, you will re receive war rewards for that. And Jesus said in Matthew 24, the world said that the tribulation is the worst time in human history. While we're in heaven, the seven years here, and the tribulation period here on earth is the worst period in human history. Next, right after the rapture, the Antichrist will be revealed. Revelation chapter 13. You may be listening online today and you're saying, Pastor, I've never heard this. I've never heard about the rapture of the church and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Living life to the fullest. Not aware of what he's, what's even going on here. Right after the rapture in Revelation 13. I have some ideas. Of, it could be. But the Bible says no one knows. Others have said it was this one or that one and they failed. And they, but the fact is that nobody knows, but it'll be somebody that has a personality that's able to captivate you. Someone that is, that is very, very liked by the world. And this will happen after the rapture, according to the Bible. Right after the rapture, the Antichrist is revealed. Revelation chapter 13, 16 to 18. He, the Antichrist, he required everyone, both small and great, that means the, the least person up to the greatest person, the rich and the poor, the billionaires of the world, everyone, he required everyone. There is no favoritism in the tribulation. Rich and poor, free and slave, to be given the mark on his right hand or his forward, or his forehead, right hand or forehead. And verse 17 says, and no one could buy or sell anything without this mark, the mark of the beast. No one could buy or sell anything. The number, verse 18 says, wisdom is needed here. Let the one who understands solve the meaning of the number of the beast, for it is the number of man. It is the number 666. Revelations 13 and verse 18. 
The reason why six is the number of man, because man and the animals were created on the sixth day, the seven days of creation, and then he rested on the seventh day. And we're looking forward to that time of rest. An interesting thing happened this Friday night. Friday night is a, is a special night, is a kind of a date night for Annette and I, and we kind of maybe play a game or go out somewhere or do something, and, and I said, Friday night, let, let's watch a movie tonight, let's, let's, you know, let's, so we couldn't find one, so we went into YouTube on our television, and the Christian movie's there, and, uh, and we saw this movie, and it was called A Matter of Faith. So we watched that movie, and it's like, oh, that's a good channel. We're going we're to subscribe to that channel on, on the YouTube. That it's called Christian Movies. And after the movie, I, when I subscribed to the channel, I looked down through the movies, list of movies, and then I saw the movie. It's like A Thief in the Night. Now, now those that were around in the, in the early 70s, remember this video that came out, this movie that came out, A Thief in the Night. It was released in 1972. How many saw that way back then? Yeah, A Thief in the Night. Maybe you've seen this movie since then. But that movie was released 49 years ago. 49 years ago. And next year, coming up, will be the, the jubilee anniversary of that movie. It'll be a jubilee year. I have not seen that movie for almost 50 years. If my memory serves me correct, sometimes it don't. <laughs> In the early 70s. The movie begins with a, a song by Larry Norman. He, he was a, one of the, they think he's probably one of the fathers of the Christian rock music. And, is, and the name of the song is, I Wish We'd Been Ready. And it says a, a piece of bread could, could buy a bag of gold. This is during the tribulation because gold and money and everything won't be worth anything. And we see what's happening with the cryptocurrencies around the world right now. And people are rushing to a worldwide currency. And then it says there's no time to change your mind. The sun has come and you've been left behind. It says a man and a wife asleep in bed. She hears a noise, turns her head. He's gone. I wish we'd all been ready. Patty was the young girl in the, in the movie. She was the star of the movie. And Patty was a young woman, and she was caught up with living life for the present and very little concern for the future. Yes, she went to her church, but her minister said she's okay. She didn't need to be born again. She didn't need Christ as her Savior. And then all of a sudden, people were going about their daily activities. A man was mowing the lawn. And all of a sudden, the camera goes up into the sky, comes down again, and there's no one at the lawnmower. The pastor at the, the church there where Patty's friend attended and, and where she got saved, he was out on the sign and he was putting the sign up and the sign said, the end is N-E and that's when the rapture took place. The end is near. And I looked at Annette and I said, that's the title of my message, the end is near, but it was the time is near. And folks, the time is near. Google the movie, Deep in the Night. I recommend that you go in and watch that movie. The Bible says that no one will be able to buy or sell without the mark. There's one world government. There's one world currency. You may be thinking, oh, if I miss the rapture, then I'm not going to take the mark. Really? I'm not going to take the mark of the beast if you miss the rapture? How hard is that going to be? See somebody starving. And you've got to have a mark in your forehead or on your wrist to go get food for that little child. Go get food for the dog. He's there starving. How hard is that going to be? Well, we're going to 
Arizona to see our grandkids in a few weeks in November. And in order to go there, we had to be vaccinated. Guess what we did? Annette and I and Phil were fully vaccinated because we want to go and we want to see our kids. We haven't seen them in over two years. How hard is that? How much more willing, how much more motivated will people be willing to take the mark of the beast in order to get what they need to feed their family? But once you do, once you take the mark of the beast, your eternity is sealed if you miss the rapture, if you miss the coming of the Lord. You'll have to seal your faith with your blood. You'll have to die. And that's the rapture of the church. And I read it in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And that was the passage in the movie that the pastor was quoting from. It's a private event, the rapture of the church. Again in Luke 17, that night, two people were asleep in bed. One was taken and the other left. Two women were grinding flour together at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. That's the rapture, which we believe will happen very soon. There are two great wars. There are two great wars in the Revelations, and most people only talk about the, the Battle of Armageddon in the Valley of Jezreel. And I remember there a few years ago when we, when we toured Israel, we went down in this vast valley of the Valley of Jezreel. That's where the Battle of Armageddon is going to be fought, there in that place. The Bible talks about one at the beginning of the seven years' tribulation, and one at the end of the seven years. Two wars. Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39. Some call it the, the war of Gog and Magog. Could happen at any time. And it's centered around the rapture of the church. Some Bible theologians believe that this could be the lining up right now in the Middle East. In recent days. Keep an eye on Iran. Iran... It could be the trigger for the Gog and Magog war. The Bible talks about who is going to be involved in that war is Persia, uh, Gog and Magog, which is Russia, Libya, Turkey, uh, Iraq, and Afghanistan, and Syria, and many other countries that are located in that they're coming to fight against Israel. And Iran right now is have been trying to get the nuclear capability, capability that they have said many times that they will use to destroy God's people, will be used to destroy Israel. The Israeli defense ministry, uh, uh, Benny Ganantz, Wednesday before last, told the UN diplomats, he said, in 10 weeks away, Iran will have a nuclear weapon. Minister Gantz said Israel is ready to strike Iran to stop this development. Folks, tensions are high. I don't know if you're watching this, if you're seeing the news, if you're so caught up with our news here that you don't see what's happening, but it's happening over there right now. Tensions are high. Russia is in Syria, right next to Israel. Iran is in Syria, gathering on the northern border of Israel, and it's almost unbelievable all that's going on. BBC reported this morning that Russia is in talks with the new Taliban government and is speaking very positively again for the new Taliban government. There's going to be change. The... By the way, Russia has warned the United States and Russia that if they step in and do anything to their friends, Iran, they will get involved. Now, folks, that's serious. The time is near. The rapture is exciting news. 
And the second coming of the Lord is horrific news and a horrific event. The rapture happens in the sky. The second coming starts in the sky. And it ends up when Jesus puts His feet on the Mount of Olives. Amen? I'm looking forward to that day. And the whole earth, the whole earth, will see it in Revelation 19, the Bible says. Then there comes the 1,000-year rule of Christ that we call the millennium after we come back. We're going to come back with Jesus in, the, in His second return, and we're going to be with Him. Amen? And I am looking forward to it. The greatest question that I had this morning as our worship team prepares to come back, the greatest question is, are you ready? You're listening to me this morning by live stream or television, the local Rogers station here, and I ask you the question, are you ready? I'm not asking the question, do you go to church? Do you pay the church? Do you good, do, do good deeds? These are all good things, and the Bible says we must do good deeds. We must do certain things. But are you ready? Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior? Have you accepted Him? The time is near. If you feel you're not ready, this is the time. I read the first three verses. I read the first three verses when I started the message today at the Revelations. And now as the message is coming to an end, I'm going to le read the last two verses of the book of Revelations. Revelations chapter 22 and verse 20. He who is faithful to all of these things say, yes, I am coming soon. That's in red. Yes, I am coming soon. That's Jesus Christ. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with God's holy people. And I was thinking as I was going over my notes, after the rapture of the church, Pastor Andy, after the rapture of the church, don't you think this message is going to be censored? Don't you think somebody is going to click on that message? Oh, I heard Pastor Sharon preach a message on the coming of the Lord. Oh, I must, I must go and find that again. And they go to Facebook or YouTube. No longer available. What we're seeing right now, the things that have been purged and bleached off the internet and, and banned, talking about the name of Jesus or, or whatever, then it's allowed there now. But the time is now. When I got saved in 1973, I thought, I wonder when I sat dad and you and mom came in St. John's. I was in university, I'd met Annette, beautiful Christian young woman. I was unsaved, I was, you know, you were praying for me, Keith. I was gonna say Pastor Keith. <laughs> You were praying for him, and the students at BMC were praying for me. And that night, October the 21st, 1973, I wonder, did Pauline Shaw, I wonder, did she preach a message on that movie? <laughs> a thief in the night. I don't know what she prayed. Maybe you can, Dad. You got a, you got a better memory than I do. <laughs> Junior said, you called him by name when he came in. <laughs> Hadn't seen you in 40 years. I don't know what she preached that night, but that night I left. The seating was a little different here, but I left that part of the church. Came out in the aisle. I didn't go out the door. <laughs> I came to the altar. <laughs> I gave Jesus Christ my life. <laughs> That night, he saved me. And then he called me 28 years ago into full-time ministry. The 
Bible says that every one of us has sinned, Romans 3.23, and come short of the glory of God. Don't think, don't think that you're without sin or I'm without sin. There was only one person without sin, and that one person was Jesus Christ. And he's here today. His presence is here. His anointing is here in this place. And those that are listening online, Jesus is ready. He's ready to accept you into the fellowship, into the kingdom of God. Romans 10 and 9 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. We're going to bow at this time, and I'm going to give you an opportunity in this place here. And at the end of the service, if you'd like to come forward for prayer, these altars are open. Prayer for salvation, prayer for healing at the end of the service. It's just a simple prayer. Millions and millions have prayed this prayer over the years. And their name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Folks, that's what you need to do. If you neglected doing that, as Patty did, she neglected. She neglected, and one in the middle of the night or morning, yeah, it was in the morning in the movie, she looked over, and there was nobody there. And she ran to the radio, and there was the report stuff of something that's happened all over the world. There were millions and millions of people that are missing and they didn't know why but Patty's pastor when she ran to the church he knew why he was there in agony he said I misled my people I didn't bring them I didn't tell them about Jesus I didn't ask them to accept Jesus Christ I just told them about Jesus you could know about me but unless you talk with me unless we get together. You'll never know me. It's the same thing with Jesus. You can know about him. About him, but you'll not know him personally until you meet him. So we're going to pray that prayer right now. Heads bowed all over this. Even if you're at your computer, wherever you're listening today, you can repeat after me. Dear Father God, I come to you today with all of my sin with all of my sorrow, with all of my burdens, and I ask you, Father God, to forgive me of my sins. Jesus, come into my heart and make me a new person. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Those that prayed that prayer today, those that prayed that prayer, you are now saved. The Bible says that the angels are shouting in heaven. If you've prayed that prayer this morning, and your relatives that have gone on before you, it's like, they get the message. Somebody has prayed that prayer. A relative has prayed that prayer. The next song is, I Will Rise, Pastor Andy. The word says, I will rise when he calls my name. That name when you pray that prayer, the same prayer similar to that I prayed October the 21st, 1973, when you pray that prayer, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen? That's something to praise God for. That's something to thank Him for today. So we're going to all stand and sing at this time as we, as we sing this, I will rise. Let's all stand together with us and And Thank there's you. a peace I've come to know. Yes, Lord. Though my heart and flesh may fail, there's an anchor for my soul. And I can say it is well. And Jesus has overcome. And the grave is overwhelmed. 
The victory is won. He is risen from the dead, and I will rise when He calls my name. No more sorrow, no more pain. I will rise on eagle's wings before my God. Fall on my knees and rise. I will rise. And there's a day that's drawing near. Hallelujah. When this darkness breaks to light. The shadows disappear, and my faith shall be my eyes, and Jesus has overcome, and the grave is over.